Uh, it's the political situation. Uh, you know, uh, I was I was going after uh, all of the individ key individuals throughout the uh, uh, West African Joint Criminal Enterprise. I was breaking up the Blood Diamond story. Uh, all those individuals that in the movie that you may have seen, uh, and and prosecuting them and indicting them, and they did not want to see that happen. And so, you know, the threat. What you do is your security people are the ones that decide the threat level. And uh, you know, when I would travel around the world, I would also have. Uh, it's the gaining country that has the decision to make the threat against you. Sometimes I could travel to a, a foreign country. Well, like when I went back home to the United States, I didn't have close protection. But when I was in Europe, which is a little bit closer, uh, I would have close protection from the internal security of that particular country. I'm trying to understand what's happening in Africa in the context of what happened in Germany. Uh, with Germany, there was a Nuremberg trials and a prosecution of the Nazis, and then subsequently, uh, Germany hasn't been um, involved in crimes against humanity. Will it end the cycle? Well, you know, I I don't think there's enough evidence to uh, to answer your question completely because I think that remains to be seen. Because modern international criminal law has really only been around as a formal discipline. Uh, for 19 years, if you count 1993, which was a beginning year. But certainly by 1995, we have jurisprudence and the building of jurisprudence and the building of uh, proper procedures and evidence. So, you know, we're looking at a very young discipline. I don't think the jury's still out on any of this. Uh, breaking the cycle of atrocity, uh, whether international criminal law is actually able to do that. Uh, modern international criminal law is uh, Western oriented and white, I call it white man's justice and I've written about it in a law review article. Uh, you know, I, you, we have to ask the question as an international community, is the justice we seek the justice they want? And having traveled through Africa, there are other ways of justice other than white man's justice. And so we have to be humble enough and not as arrogant as not to go in and say, all right, this is the way. So that's, that's one of the challenges. The second challenge is, is the tiered system and the way we are approaching uh, mankind's worst crimes. And we were talking a little bit about this before uh, we started uh, this discussion this morning. And that is uh, we're getting into a concept called semantic indifference. In other words, by treaty law, uh, you know, if, if someone mentions the G word, genocide, uh, by law, the world has to do something. It really hasn't happened that way, but that's technically it. Uh, so that is called the crime of crime. So we have the first tier. And what politicians and diplomats are doing is they're ranking crimes against humanity and war crimes two and three. So when they see crimes against humanity, read that Syria, we're not doing anything. We're just sitting back watching children, women and children and civilians die uh, at the dozens a day. Because uh, there's no genocide going on. There's just crimes against humanity. It's just crimes against humanity. So we have to be very mindful of this. Now, it doesn't matter. The killing of human beings by their government is wrong, whether it's genocide or whether it's a crime against humanity or it's a violation of domestic law, period. Is it necessarily, if maybe going forward the goal is to have a more culturally attuned sense of justice, mm -hmm. uh, then is it perhaps not a bad, maybe it's a good thing that the United States is no longer perceived as a leader and operating as a leader. I, no, I think that's a fair point. Uh, yeah, why do we have to be the leader? Maybe let, let the rest of the world do that. I think my, my sub point is, though, is that uh, I think we'd like to see the United States a part of that only because of the, the, the positive effects of being a part of the world's movement towards justice for all, which is kind of what, doesn't our, don't we say that? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Yeah. So, do we know how to do that without uh, kind of throwing our elbows and forcing uh, ourselves on, upon everybody else's leaders? I don't know. That's just it. We don't. The jury's still out. We, 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 we haven't done this long enough. You know, the ICC's only been around since 2002. It's only we're celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. So, I don't know. You know, 10 years from now, sitting here, uh, uh, God willing, uh, talking about it, we might have a little bit more clarity. In, in any of the answers or the questions that have been discussed.